Welcome to the Talk Back Fans High School Football Preview Show with the East Lake North Rangers. I'm Terry Heil. I'm John Fasiglia. And tonight we are on the back porch, the veranda <laughs> of Coach Sean Dodd, Big Whistle. We're here with the East Lake North Rangers. The Rangers are members of the Western Reserve Conference. They are coming off of a three and seven season, but quite frankly, they're loaded in the trenches coming back, aren't they? Are very big, very big up front. Yes. We are now joined by senior defensive lineman, right tackle Noah Shannon. Noah, thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So Noah, we're going to try to stick to football with all the other stuff that's going on. Okay. What's your focus as you guys start practice here over the last couple of days? I'm focused on working hard, doing whatever I can to help the team, and with my brothers, working as much as we can for as long as we can. Yeah. What's it like playing defensive line for your father? <laughs> it's it's interesting for sure it's it's different so every maybe every criticism you're like hmm hmm what was that but then you're thinking about it too is he's a coach he's trying to do his job and get it done and we're working th we're working with it and i feel like we're doing a pretty good job does the course of the conversation change from practice to the car to home uh sometimes sometimes things won't be said that w would be said on the field or something like that or different things or he'll be a little calmer once we get home and once he's out of the coaching and yeah so you also play offense i do i play, play right tackle what do you enjoy better uh d line a little i, you I don't think... have to say that just because your dad's a coach <laughs> <laughs> i do i i i like i like going and attacking and just i don't know just getting in there and messing things up that's my yeah. thing so talk about uh the summer because of how things have been and what you guys did and what the coaches laid out for you at home to be able to get yourself prepared for August 1st, which was this past Saturday, uh, and get you guys ready to be ready for that date. Uh, we've just been doing our drills, um, working on our fundamentals primarily, just making sure we got everything ready to go for when the time's, time's ready. And how much of a benefit was it to have your father, who's also a coach, be at home with you to be able to do that well film is a lot easier and <laughs> things like that and looking at the playbook and asking him just being able to ask questions so i have to not have to watch as much film or just because i have him as someone to just go to right away no from a player's perspective i i know that north has gone to great lengths to promote the safety of the program from a player's perspective, how does that make you feel as you came into this? Not no, you know, with all the unknowns that we have about what's been going on so far this year and especially this summer. We've just been doing everything we've been told to, following all the protocols and procedures, and just trying to play football, doing whatever we can. Yeah, it's tough to talk about schedule because we're not quite sure what the schedule is going to look like. Some teams are out, some teams are on pause, some teams are still in. But when you look at the schedule outside of South, because we know South is that big rivalry game, what's the game that you look for that maybe has a, a little bit more importance for you than anybody else on the schedule? There's there's a couple games. I know Riverside and Chardon, Chardon and Mayfield have been the games that we've our class have not been able to overcome, and that's one thing that we've been working towards, and that's always been that's always been on our minds, always in the back of our minds. Those three. Yeah. So desire to play at the next level. Uh, no, not for me, not for me. Uh, I'm looking at trades. I'm in a construction program, and or the military. I could take that route too. I'm still figuring everything out. Beautiful. So playing off of that, how important is it to you to be able to get a football season in this year? It's everything. It's everything I've ever worked for since I was young. You know, always seeing the seeing the older guys and going out to those Friday night games and seeing everyone work. It's been everything I've ever wanted and everything I love so yeah so not to put too much pressure on you but you got a pretty broad set of shoulders so from a player's <laughs> perspective not just football but why sports now why is it important that they come back because it it keeps kids out of trouble there's kids who would be doing other things that that I know and things that if they weren't there maybe they would be doing something they weren't supposed to and it keeps them busy and keeps them keeps them good from a defensive perspective you're playing on the d-line talk about your d-line mates uh i got i got a couple of uh, me uh you got sam Jaden, sean i'm trying to think of the, the other guys but those are the primary guys who come in kevin we got those guys and we're just we're a bunch of animals trying to get in there and just destroy just and what, what would you say is the strength of that group the strength our bond for sure if we 
run through a wall, one of us has, one of us is going to run through that. Yeah. All right, and then how about the guys playing behind you? What's the strength of the group behind you? Uh, they're always ready and willing to learn and uh, just help us and see everything we can, do whatever they can to help us out, and we'll do everything we can to help them. Okay, and I believe it was your freshman year North had a taste of the playoffs for the first time, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, knowing that the last two years you guys came up a little bit short, Hopefully there's a season this year. How much would it mean to you guys to get North back into the playoffs? That would be everything. Everything we've worked for for these past four years and even before with the, the lifting and just coming in and growing up and seeing it, that would be everything to bring that back to our hometown. What's it like practicing against those behemoths on the offensive line? <laughs> it's good. It's <laughs> it's a challenge. I love it, though, because we're just banging in there and just getting – it's the trenches. We're just working and, I don't know, tough guys. Would you feel that – between the offensive and the defensive line, it's definitely one of the team's primary strengths. Oh uh, yeah, I would have to agree with you. We're just always in there, big, big dudes, not not willing to sacrifice anything. So, yeah. uh, so I'd like you to talk a little bit about, from a player's perspective, the support that you guys receive from not just the North community, but really the entire Willoughby East Lake community. You guys went through a rough stretch, mm -hmm. had a little bit of trouble getting some levies passed. Finally, things passed. Mm -hmm. that that's part of what hopefully enables sports to yeah. continue this year. What do those folks mean to you looking in those stands, whether you're at home or whether you're at South or somewhere else in the area, knowing mm -hmm. that there's those folks are out there supporting you guys? What does that mean to you guys? It means everything. They've they've backed us for this whole way, and they're just a part of it as much as we are. They want to see us do good, and we want to we want to do good things for them too, and show them and get everything we can. Any parting thoughts? Uh, I hope we have a season and we get everything done, and yeah. All right, so that was Noah Shannon, senior defensive lineman and right tackle. Noah, greatly appreciate the time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We are now joined by North defensive line coach Todd Shannon. Coach Shannon is a 1996 grad of East Lake North. Coach, thanks for joining us. How are you tonight? Very well. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Coach, we asked your son, what's it like coaching him? It's, uh, it's awesome. You know, the, the ability to, uh, to, to coach your kid at the next level is always always something that's that's a, a great feeling and a, and a great thing to do and talk a little bit about your group that d line group where are we at in terms of uh varsity experience where are we at in terms of maturity how does that group work well together it's a very mature group uh, a lot of more rotational players last year uh, a couple saw some good good playing time last year so you know they, they get along really well they're all great friends inside and outside of the the program so um i i think they'll carry us very well this year i really do how many of those big behemoths from the O line do you get besides your son? Uh, we have we have some packages that we we can use them in, and you know they they uh, I mean they're just a load to move, so it's 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 a it's a pleasure working with those guys too. Yeah. How long have you been at North? As uh, this is my sixth year. Six year. Yeah. All on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Is it just a prerequisite that all the North coaches <laughs> have to be graduates? Is that a thing now? <laughs> I, I just wondered. I mean, ever since you know, since he got her, he's a graduate. You're a graduate. Who else is graduates on the team? We, we have, on the uh, coaching staff. Yeah, we have we have quite a few alumni actually on the coaching staff. Yeah. Total prerequisite now in, in the Dodd regime. Total prerequisite. <laughs> my my dad actually coached here too. And and he went there also. No, he no, went to, he, he went to okay. uh, he went to Euclid. Oh, okay. He well, graduated that's from right. Euclid. Yeah. That, that's that's all right. We won't hold that against. What year? Uh sixty one, I think. No, no Langdon's in the 61 class? Okay. <laughs> um, talk about your, your, uh, your outlook for the season, your strengths. Uh, what do you think can carry you and carry you guys as far as you possibly can go? Um, I, I think with the, the group of kids that I have up front, um, they're, they're not like bulking behemoths like we have on the offensive side of the ball, but they're, they're quick, they're agile, they're a striking type of defense, and I think that's going to carry us a long, long way. I really do. Especially some of the teams that you guys have to play in your conference. Yeah, yeah. Chardon with the wing team. Yeah. Brush with a lot of speed. Mayfield's got a, got a ton of weapons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tell how that all works in, in your guys' favor I, I, defensively. Yeah, I think with those kids being able to, to strike a gap really fast and just cause some of our own confusion in the backfield as opposed to the confusion that they're causing for us in the backfield, I think it'll be a great thing. I really do. Yeah. Talk a little bit from a defensive perspective how you coordinate – with the guys, with the linebackers coach, with the defensive secondary coach, and the defensive coordinator to make sure you guys are all on the same page, uh, and getting we, the best utilization of the talent that you have. I mean, we talk daily. Um, the, the the good thing is the guy as a DB coach is also an alumni, so we have that going for us there. Shock, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
And our, and our D coordinator, uh, Coach Suck, he's great. Uh, he, he came in uh, a couple years ago, and he's just we all we all mesh and get along really well. Biggest, and, and I hate to say challenge, but I think it's the right word. Biggest challenge that the WRC presents for you guys. You know, right now it's uh, it's just knowing if we're going to have a season or not. You know, I just I just I, I these kids have worked so hard. You know. Um, I just really would like to see them be able to have this season, you yes. know. So we let your son make the case. Make the case. Why? Why? Not just you, football, but why sports should come back. You know, he he brought up a good point. You know, th there's some kids out there that that would be doing other things that they shouldn't be doing. You know, this is this three hours a day, two hours a day, whatever that keeps them. It gives them some meaning, some purpose, some drive in their life that they might not have. You know, uh, a sense of direction. You know, a coach to put their arm around them and say, "Hey, you're doing a good job." You know, and, and these these kids need it, and they, and they want it. So that's that's my case. You know, if, if we could do whatever we can, protocols in place, make it safe for them, let's let them have a season. How pleased were you uh, with the summer program based on what you had, the adversity you had to go through and, I think and how it, the kids it, came through it? It went really well. You know, they, they uh, we had a great off season up until we had to stop because of COVID. Um, and then, you know, a lot of them did stuff on their own. And then we came back strong, came back really strong. A lot of kids worked on their own, which was great. And you got two days in the books. I know it's hard to get a read from two days. Yeah. But what's the early read on the first two days? I like what I see. I really do. I like what I see. Um, kids working hard, not afraid to to get in there and and and, and get crazy and get a little a little chirpy at times, you know, and and just do what they got to do. Yeah. You know, do your job. That's you know, coach preaches it all the time. That's what we talk about. Do your job. Yeah. You know, one eleventh on the field. If everyone gives that. We're gonna, great things are going to happen. Yeah, and not to give anything away, but give us a name or two of a guy on that D line who's kind of under the radar, who you're expecting big things from that might surprise some folks. Uh, probably Jaden Klein. Um, he uh, he played the last two well, two years ago. He played. Uh, he, he took his junior off, but uh, he's 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 a sleeper. You know, he's uh, he gets in there. He's such a hard worker. He gives a high motor all the time. Um, I think we'll see good things out of him. I really do. And what would you say is is his strength? He's got determination. Okay. He does not quit his drive. All right. Coach, this has been Coach Todd Shannon, defensive line coach, East Lake North, 1996 grad coach. We greatly appreciate the time, and good luck this season. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And now we are joined by Chris Malika, North senior quarterback and cornerback. Chris, thanks for joining us. How are you tonight? Thank you for having me. So, Chris, last year you got some very valuable experience yep. at quarterback. Um, you saw more time early in the season as a defensive back, and if I remember correctly, you also did some holding. Is that correct? No, I no? did not. No. Okay, I have, I'm confused. Or I apologize. <laughs> Talk about how that experience from last year has put you in a position to be a leader at the quarterback position this year. Um, it actually worked out great because this year I came in and like you know I didn't really need to learn anything. I already knew the offense, so it was just easier to command and tell everyone you know what what they should be doing. Mm. And Coach talked a little bit about the hide-and-seek, as he called it, <laughs> offense. You, you guys have a massive offensive line, yeah. a couple of guys, uh, at least two guys, 6'5 and above, over 300 pounds. Uh, you're not the tallest of guys, so it's <laughs> going to be easy for you to hide back there. Talk about some of the guys that you have behind you who are you going to be able to get the ball to. Uh, Mo Morgan, he's fast, and uh, over the offseason, he really got bigger, so he's going to be hard to bring down. We saw uh, Steady down. Dynamo in the second half last year, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be he'll be good this year. Um, Steven, he's a freshman. He's he's fast, so uh, look for him. And Danye Ward, we we got some speed on offense, so gonna be hard to stop. I got to think that primarily you guys are gonna look to run the ball with the size you has up has up front. Yeah. But how off, how confident are you when you do have to drop back to pass with that same size up front to protect you and be able to get the ball out? Yeah, uh, over the off season I really worked on my arm, so like. It'll be easier. I feel more comfortable dropping back this year, so should see a little bit more passing this year. Yeah. Coach mentioned that you do have an offer from Lake Erie. Congratulations. Thank you. Who else is in the mix for you at this point? Um, I've been talking to John Carroll a lot, uh, Ohio Dominican. I've talked to Akron, Bowling Green, those types of schools. And anything in particular that you want to study that might lean you one place towards the other? Uh, I haven't really figured that out yet. I'm still trying to think about that. So. Okay. When you look at the offense, again, the easy answer might be, well, the five guys up front. What's the strength of the North offense this season? Speed, for sure. Very fast. Okay. From your perspective on the defensive side of the ball, 
What's that key? What's that key strength on the defensive side of the ball that you see? They're nasty over there. They like to hit people. It's almost sick. So, yeah. Hands off you in practice, though, right? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and coach said that that you actually want to sneak up and play a little bit of D line. What is it with? Because we saw it the last couple of years with Dylan, right? Playing some D line and playing some quarterback, and he got there was an injury that kind of forced him in the year before. Yeah. What What is it with how a North quarterback is wired that he wants to play the D line instead of playing in the secondary? Uh, I don't know. Toughness. We're tough. I please. I was a quarterback when I was younger. I wanted nothing to do with the defensive line, whether <laughs> playing it or being hit by it. So I I commend you in that respect. Um. Your schedule is what it is at the moment. Obviously, things could change, but who do you out obviously outside and south? Yeah. But who do you look forward to uh, competing against, and who do you think you know maybe the teams that, that you guys need to get over the hump against to go to the next level? Uh, Riverside is definitely one school. You know, we were up fourteen nothing on them early, and we gave it away. So we definitely want to get that one back this year. And uh, Mayfield, I got a couple friends over there, so always want to beat them. <laughs> Always good to beat your friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chris, from a defensive perspective, when you look at the conferences, are there any one or two guys that you say, okay, boy, hey, if we can shut down this gentleman or that gentleman, you know, this player or that player, boy, North's really going to go far this year? Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Talk a little bit about what you guys have gone through in the off season with the stopping and starting, and the, and the emphasis that the the program that the coaching staff has put on the protocol to keep you guys safe, and, and how you guys have come through it all. Uh, it was definitely different, for sure. It was kind of weird, you know. At first, when we started the summer workouts, we were all spread out and stuff. Like we couldn't even get close to each other, so it was it was kind of weird, and we couldn't really do too much. So, but we uh, we made it work. How do you guys? So from a defensive perspective, how do you guys fo how do you guys work on your tackling? Is it all using dummies or, or how are you guys doing it? Um, I haven't really been on the defensive side all that much okay. this year, so I can't really tell can't really you. Speak to it. Fair enough. Offensively, uh, talk about you talked about the running backs that you had. Talk about some of the receivers that'll be getting the ball from you. Uh, John Lanning, he's quick and he's got some nice feet, so. He'll be good to throw. Um, Zach Kozell, he's another one, quick, good feet. So they got hands and any potential of you possibly running the ball in like an option type of thing or or or, or run pass options or anything like that. Oh uh, yeah, we got a couple RPOs. So yeah, we yeah. Do you prefer to run it or I prefer do. to throw it? No, I prefer to run it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Chris, being a senior, I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked Noah. You guys made the playoffs when you were a freshman. What would it mean for what would it mean, especially for you being a guy who was at the control on the offensive side of the ball to lead this team and school back into the playoffs? Uh, you know, for me it's a must and I know for a lot of the guys on this team it is a must because we feel like we're good enough to get to that level and go far in the playoffs. Yeah. When you look at how last season ended, you guys got the three and five and then you faced two of two of the areas teams that I think were two of the best teams in the state, Mayfield and Chardon. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from that in terms of what it's going to take for you guys to be able to get there this year? Um, you know, we were very close with Chardon in the first half. It was 14-7 at halftime. So we know we can hang with those guys. So we just need to take a couple steps forward and we got them. Any parting thoughts? No. Chris, we greatly appreciate the time. Good luck this season. This was senior quarterback Chris Malika. Thank you. We are now joined by 1991 graduate and East Lake North head coach Sean Dodd, the big whistle in his sixth season here at East Lake North. Coach, thanks for joining us. How are you tonight? Doing fantastic. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having us. I mean, this, <laughs> yeah. is, this is outstanding accommodations. We could never ask for more. I, I don't think there's another coach that could offer this. So you got one on everybody. I, yeah. I got to yeah. give you that. I'm glad we were able to, to get this done for the kids and give an opportunity and appreciate what you guys do for kids. So anything I could do to help. Yeah. So, Coach, I'm going to ask you this question first. We asked Noah. We asked Coach. I'm going to ask you. I didn't ask Chris. I let Chris off the hook. Why football? Why sports now? I think it gives them a purpose. Um, I think it gives them something to work for. Uh, it gives them all those things that we, we talk about as parents, as adults, as teachers, um, as far as accountability, work ethic, um, 
uh, sacrifice, um, and it encompasses all of those things. And I think when you put all that together, you come down to the word purpose. Um, so I, I think it's important because I think kids need that. Um, it gives them some guidance. And for, for some kids in some communities, uh, sometimes as coaches, we're, we're all some kids have. Um, so we, you know, we don't take that role lightly. And I think it's uh, something that all kids need to be a part of, whether it's football or soccer or band. Um, I, I just really believe in the extracurriculars and just happen to be in the football world. Yeah. And now on to the game. The last two years, unfortunately, have not gone according to plan for you guys. There's been some injury issues. There's been some other issues. But you're not one to make excuses. Give us the silver lining in the building blocks that come out of the last two years to put you in a position to be to compete and win this year. Um, I think the kids learned that they had to work a little bit harder. Um, I think uh, the off season, the, the commitment in the off season, not just being there, that, that's always been a positive, but um, the progress we had to make in the off season and for kids to see other schools that, that are having success and wanting to be at that level. I think uh, a couple years ago when we had success and made the playoffs, I think there was almost a sense of, okay, this is just going to automatically happen every year. Um, and that falls on me. That's my fault. And I, I think uh, the kids are now realizing, okay, we, we know we have a lot of work to do to get back to that level. So, Coach, when you look at your situation and you look at you, – you played here, right? You coached at some other places. You came back. You hear some kind of rumblings of, well, Sean's trying to do some things that we don't traditionally do at North football. That's what North – not North football isn't about that. That's what these other programs – that's not what North program is about. How difficult was it for you to get past it and now to kind of keep it moving in the direction you want it? Um, it really wasn't difficult at all. It's something that uh, myself and the staff believe in. Uh, we believe in the direction that we're heading, um, the, the values and, and the process that we go about things. So as far as that goes, there, it really wasn't anything challenging uh, because we, we have complete uh, belief in, in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. And um, our model is the program always comes first and then the, uh, the kids individually uh, fit within that. So that, that's what we strive for. It's all about the kids and, and their experience. And if we're not trying to give them a, a good experience first and foremost, then we're doing it for the wrong reasons. And the kids will always come first. So everything we do is centered around that. Yeah. And historically, when you look at North football, you know, I have a bunch of buddies who played at North back in the 80s because, you know, we're old. But North always had a number of really good athletes. But in the interior, they were never real, real big. That's not an issue now. You've got the horses, and it sounds like you've got some pretty good athletes. So talk about your vision as to how you see this all coming together this year to, to move you guys forward. Yeah, it all starts with the scheme. Um, I, I, I believe in what we're doing. We're, we're a flex bone team, and I believe in running the football, especially at the high school level. And uh, right now we're fortunate. You know, up front we're, we're big, and uh, we, you know, we have two Division One guys, and mm -hmm. we're pretty fortunate to have that. But uh, the other three guys that fit into there are pretty good too, and uh, they have a lot of experience. And then we've got a quarterback that can move, and uh, – um, he's a kind of a magician with the football back there with all the read option stuff that we do. Uh, I, I love our, our backfield, and we have a lot of speed on the perimeter. Uh, it's probably the fastest team, not just the biggest team up front, but it's probably the fastest team that we've had since we've been at North as well. How about on the defensive side of the ball? Um, kind of the same thing. We're not quite as big on the defensive line um, unless we put uh, Ryan and Ethan over on that side of the ball, then, then we're big anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other guys, but they're, but they're quick and they're relentless and they play with a high motor, so it really fits our scheme and what we're trying to do with uh, a little bit undersized guys. And when I say undersized, they're still probably around 190, mm -hmm. um, but they're guys that bench in that 300 range, squatting at 400 range. So they're they're powerful guys, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not going to walk in and everybody's going to be like, wow, look how big that D line is. Uh, but you're going to see a, a relentless effort out of those guys. And then behind them, we're, we're pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, our secondary and our linebackers have a pretty good speed overall as a, as a unit. Yeah, and that, so that D line, maybe they're a group that gets will get overlooked a little bit, which actually probably could play to your advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to move them a lot. We're we're, gonna, we're a slant and angle team. Uh, we're a stunt team. Um, so we're going to take advantage of that speed. We're not going to just try to to go chest to chest with some offensive line guys that might be a little bit bigger and more powerful than us. We're going to really try to use our speed up front to our advantage. And then I really like our linebackers uh, with Nate Stuck and uh, Adam Kleinhens, and hopefully those guys can get free and make a lot of plays for us. To touch a little bit on what Terry said earlier, since you are a graduate of the school, did you feel any pressure, or a, let me let me rephrase that, any additional pressure when you took the job originally and now, two-part wise, now that you've established yourself, has that pressure relinquished a little bit? Um, I don't know about pressure. Uh, I don't know if anybody or anything could put more pressure 
on me that I do myself. Um, I, I, I take my job and role as a, as a head coach or even as an assistant coach um, with, with great responsibility because of the kids. Uh, the kids get a small window and a small opportunity to play this game. You know, four years at the most at the high school level. And God willing, I, I've been fortunate to coach 20 years and hopefully I'll have 20 to 30 more. Um, I would love to be in that kind of Coach John story uh, mold of, of coaching when I'm in my 70s. But um, no, I never really felt any type of pressure. Uh, just, just the stuff that you know we put on ourselves as a staff to give a good experience to the kids and um, I, I don't feel like any weight has been lifted or anything and we're fortunate enough to make the playoffs and that was a great experience uh, but I want to get back there year after year and stay consistent and once that season's done we're moving on to the next one and uh, we don't kind of sit around and, and rest on that we, we want to be there on a consistent basis. So with your size also then up front and that I got to think you're going to be a predominantly running the football team any kind of a percentage breakdown, 70, 30, 65, 35, what would be, you know, your ideal way to <laughs> My ideal would be 100. <laughs> <laughs> the kids know that. Like, I don't mean, I, I love running a football, and I'm a run first guy. And um, honestly, it's not just coach speak. It just depends on what we're given from the defensive side, um, how many guys they put in the box, and, you know, what coverages they're playing and that type of thing. And uh, we feel complete confidence in our passing game. I, I've been really impressed, and I was just talking to Chris about it earlier. Our, our passing game the last couple of days has really taken off, and I'm really, really impressed with where we're at on that side of things. That's probably further long that I expected us to be but in a perfect world we, we would never throw the ball um, and that's not just this this year uh, that that's any year so the percentages would definitely favor the run game conference wise who do you see as being the teams that, that you have to get over the hump and the teams that should be at the top of the at the top of the conference that you guys would like to be at. Sure, I think this year you probably have to start with Chardon just because they have so much back. Um, and this year without scrimmages, uh, it's really kind of a guessing game. You have to sit down and look at rosters and see who has who back, and then look at their schedule matchups and and that type of thing. But Riverside has a lot back. I know Mayfield has their quarterback back, and anytime you can return your quarterback, you have a little bit of an advantage. Uh, Brush returns their quarterback as well, so um, I think it's going to be an exciting year in the conference. Um, I, Mayfield, for me personally, came out of nowhere last year. I didn't expect that. Well, that, I was never our, that was our sleeper. That was our sleeper. Terry, yeah, my sleeper pick of the year. That's a great call from you guys. <laughs> um, and that, there's no disrespect. I just didn't know that they were going to be um, at that level last season. And uh, so I guess right now you'd have to say on paper, uh, Chardon would probably be the favorite just because of what they return. And they're so well coached and the success they had last year. Now, and the exquisite jawline of Coach Mitch Hewitt. Right? Oh, oh right. yeah. yeah and, absolutely. And when you can wear no, a shirt no that offense. tight and get away with it. I'll say this on camera. No offense. It's the best looking coach in the conference. <laughs> Hands I mean, down, he hands gets my down. vote. Hands, he gets my I, vote. See, He's going to love this when he alone. sees this, too. I knew I wasn't alone. <laughs> I have a question off of his comment here. Go ahead. You talked about the scrimmage, the lack of scrimmages. Give us an advantage and a disadvantage of there not being scrimmages this year. Um, I think one advantage is that you can kind of hide a little bit if, if you're changing things. Um, so we, we've made some changes and adjustments in what we do. And um, so that will be a little bit of a secret until we kind of get out there just like everybody else. Uh, and then a disadvantage is like we have North Olmstead week one. I, I'm not really going to have any idea what they're running until we get out there and um, see them that night. Yeah, And I could also see where the fact that your guys haven't been able to hit somebody in a different colored jersey could also be an advantage or a disadvantage depending upon kind of how you kind of rein in that energy and, and that aggression. Yeah, I think for a team like us this year, it's a little bit of an advantage because we're so senior heavy and we have a lot of experience. So our guys know what that moment is like. I think if you're a younger team and maybe a little bit more inexperienced, you're, you might be going in there with some question marks as a coach, like, okay, are we going to be ready? Are they going to be shell-shocked? We don't know how they're going to respond when they get hit or when there's some adversity. Um, if, if there was ever a situation to have a team in this type of situation, I, I, I like where we're at with our guys just because we are so senior heavy. Okay. So a question I wanted, I've thought about all day and I wanted to ask you. So because of the unknown, um, as of right now, you have 10 games scheduled. You could lose a game or two. Brush is on hold at the moment. Mayfield was off. They're back. Uh, Revere's in Summit County, and they've put out their Summit County, Cuyahoga County have also put out the same type of things. If by chance you a team drops from your schedule, will you look to replace them? Absolutely, 100%. And who would you look to, or is it going to be first available? 
Yeah, it would be first available. Whoever's ready and available, and that's something that some schools are already starting to, to do kind of behind the scenes a little bit. We have not started that yet, but we've talked as a staff a little bit. Um, if, if we're fortunate enough to, to go forward and, and, and be able to play 10 games, if somebody else is not able to play, our goal will be able to pick up anybody we can just to give the kids the opportunity. It, to me, it doesn't make a difference who we play. We'd be willing to play anybody. Do you think that has some positive ramifications on scheduling going forward if that has to happen? That, that, that some schools will maybe be a little bit more open to, okay, hey, maybe we wouldn't have gone down this road, but we had to, and you know what? No matter what the outcome, hey, you know, this, this is a pretty good matchup. This, this makes sense for our kids. You know what? We might think about adding them to the schedule over the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. You might see some teams, um, like you just mentioned, that normally wouldn't have those conversations that might now. Um, so, for example, you know, you might see uh, maybe a smaller school play in Ignatius or, or a Manor just to pick up games. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can absolutely see that happening. Kirtland Manor? Do we get Kirtland Manor? Uh, it's, it, it, it's possible. <laughs> well, and, and, and the reason I ask that is because I have a friend who coaches at Wycliffe. Uh, we, we had a conversation today. They're down to five games at the moment because there's five teams in their schedule that have already canceled. So they're going to be scrambling just like anybody else. So because of the unknown and because of the cost factor that may involve in all this and you might have maybe the state gives the okay but schools may, school systems may not be able to pay for it. willoughby east lake is also unfortunately has two high schools that they're going to have to worry about cost effective talk about that and and what you feel or think may just your your opinion when it comes to all of that yeah that stuff's all above my pay grade and for people that uh, are a lot smarter than me to decide um i'm hopeful that we have a season um you know i'm fortunate that that our district right now we're in a situation we've been able to practice and um you know we'll see where we go from here uh but open games you know we'll, we'll look to pick up anybody i know the cost uh if the state um, holds that uh, that could be tough for many districts most districts I don't know many districts that would be able to to handle that burden um, but I'm gonna kind of wait and see mode and, and see what happens with all of that um, again I, I don't get a vote or a say in that so I'm just gonna sit back and, and cross my fingers and do what we need to to hopefully get ready to play week one and do you feel that unfortunately I feel this way so I just wanted to touch on this and maybe you get it there's been a lack of leadership from Columbus whether it be in the, from the governor's office or from the Ohio High School Athletic Association, do you think somebody should have taken the bull, bull by the horns and run with this? Whether you play yay or nay, either way, but it just seems like there's been way too many conflicting statements and opinions by different the Ohio Department of Health, the counties, the governor's office, and the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Yeah, again, that's hard to say because I'm not privy to those conversations, so I really don't know what goes on behind the scenes or, or what gets said and um, who's in charge of all of these different things. I, I, you know, you have um, you know Governor DeWine in his office, and then you have OSHA, then you have the Ohio Department of Health, and then you have the Lake County Board of Health. So um, with, with all these different entities, uh, if you will, that, that are having these conversations and making these decisions, um, I just kind of sit back and wait. Um, they haven't come to, to Sean Dodd and asked my opinion or my thought or uh, given me a vote on anything. Um, so uh, that's something I just, to be honest, just sit back and, and wait. Um, you know, this is such a different time and there's no blueprint on how to do this. So who's to say who's right and who's wrong? Everybody's just really concerned about the safety of the kids and um, also trying to play football at the same time. So um, I understand the pressures that, that everybody's under and, and how uncertain these times are for everybody making these decisions. So I'm just going to sit back and wait and see what happens. From a, from a practice perspective, Coach, um, you know, the O-line, D-line, it's kind of difficult to social distance and still practice. How have you guys kind of worked through that? Yeah, once we get into practice mode, it's practice as usual. Um, the only thing we have to do is make sure we keep the kids social distant that aren't in and involved in that right. particular drill, and our kids have done a great job with that. Yeah. And talk a little bit about the community, the, the, yeah, the support you get from this community in terms of the people showing up. And, and again, you guys went through a little rough stretch from a school situation. They were able to put you guys in a position where hopefully you can play. Um, talk about how, how meaningful that is to you and how meaningful it is to these kids. Yeah, I love this community. Um, it's something I've been a part of my entire life. And, you know, they, they rallied and supported the, the last love we have and fortunate enough to pass that to bring sports back and keep the sports that we did have. And, um, you know, I, I see support also in just the sure numbers that we have. We had 102 kids uh, at the start of summer 
out for football, and we have over 30 some on the freshman team. So uh, just having that faith in us as coaches to, to send their kids up in this time, uh, to me, shows a lot of support. Um, and we've never been denied uh, anything that we've ever asked for. So um, we're pretty fortunate in the community we live in. Yeah. And you know, Coach, I always have a coach's question. I kind of word it a little bit different every year. So you're, you're going to get the first one this year. Why are you who you are? Boy, life experiences. Life experiences for me. I've uh, been through a lot throughout my life, a lot of adversity um, that I've had to overcome, and uh, I take a lot of pride in that and uh, watching my family overcome the adversity that they've had to uh, work through throughout life. So um, life experiences are why I am who I am, um, and because of these kids that are out here now and the kids that I coach, uh, those guys, um, along with my family, are the reasons I do the things that I do and why the reason who I am. Beautiful. I can only enhance that by saying he coached my son in peewee ball. So I've known him since then, and he's the same person back then as he is now, no matter what job he has. So it, I don't think people realize the passion and that you put forth to it because you and I have had many conversations standing on the sidelines and 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 uh, in, in peewee ball when Tyler and Frankie were playing together. So yeah. uh People who don't know you don't understand that, and I feel I have a pretty good grasp at it just because I got to know you pretty well back then. So you're to be commended for that. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. So as always, Coach, we greatly appreciate the time. Um, really look forward, hopefully, to covering some North Ranger football this year and seeing you guys make a move. Um, it sounds like the pieces are in place. Hopefully some other things are going to happen to enable that to happen. And we'll be looking at football here in another month, and that would be a good thing. So, But as always, greatly appreciate the time. Greatly appreciate the use of the facility. The hospitality. Yeah, this was yeah. fun. <laughs> this, this is outstanding. This is the first. Right. So this has been the Talkback Fans High School Football Preview with the East Lake North Rangers. Thank you to Coach Dodd. Thank you to Coach Shannon, uh, Noah Shannon, and Chris Malika. Greatly appreciate the time. I'm Terry Heil. John Fasiglia, Pat Langdon on, on technical duty tonight. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> We'll see you when we see you.